Hello, this video describes using the TI-83 Plus with our trigonometric functions specifically in degree measure mode. We'll talk about the basic trig functions, the reciprocal trig functions, and the inverse trig functions. Before we talk about how to use our calculator, let's go back to our basic right triangle. And let's look at the 45, 45, 90 right triangle. This is one of the two triangles I've told you to memorize. If we look at the 45-45 triangle, we should remember that we can talk about this with legs length 1 and the hypotenuse length square root of 2. If I wanted to talk about the sine of 45 degrees, we remember the sine of an angle is the opposite side of the hypotenuse, and in the case of a 45 degree triangle, that would be 1 over square root of 2. We also need to remember that we can't leave a square root in the denominator, so we'll rationalize the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by square root of 2, and that leaves us as sine of 45 degrees equaling square root of 2 over 2. Remember, square root of 2 over 2 is the exact answer for sine of 45 degrees. Square root of 2 is an irrational number, so if the question asks for an exact answer, you must write it as square root of 2 over 2. Well, let's see how we'd use our calculator to come up with the same answer. First of all, let's look at a few buttons on this calculator. The first one that we really need to pay attention to is mode. The mode button tells the calculator the units you're going to use for the trig functions. Units are critical when using our calculator. For instance, if I asked you how long does it take you to run 2, you don't know if I mean 2 miles or 2 meters, and your answer would be very different depending on what my units are. So we need to make sure our calculator understands what we're expecting from it. So since we're talking about degree mode in this lecture, we need to always check to make sure our calculator is in degree mode and not radian mode. Don't worry if you don't know what radian mode is yet. We'll talk about radian measure later on in this course. The other buttons we need to look at are the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons. These are three out of our six basic trig functions. You don't see cosecant, secant, or cotangent on the calculator. To use those, we'll need to use the reciprocal key. All right, let's go back to our 45, 45, 90 triangle. Again, we know that sine of 45 degrees is equal to square root of 2 over 2. Let's see if we can get our calculator to give us the same answer. All right, here's our TI-83+. plus. Again, before I do anything, I'm going to click on the mode button. I want to make sure the calculator is assuming I'm using degrees and not radians. And you can see that when you first start up your calculator, it generally starts off in radian mode. So we're going to scroll down to radian and scoot over instead to degree and hit enter. Now the calculator will be talking degrees, not radians. All right, so sine of 45 degrees. To do that, we're just going to click on the sine button. We're going to type in 4, 5. I like to end the parentheses. And we'll hit Enter. Well, we don't get anything that looks like square root of 2 over 2. We have something 0 0.7071. Well, again, this has to do with the exact answer versus an approximate answer. Let's go ahead and type in square root of 2 divided by 2. And let's see what we get. Great, we get the right answer. We get the same answer. So the approximate value for 45 degrees, the sine of 45 degrees, is 0 0.7071. The cosine of 45 degrees should equal the sine of 45 degrees, and it does. And the tangent of 45 degrees, remember the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, and that should give us an answer of 1. Well, what about the other three trigonometric functions? Let's first look at cosecant. Remember, the sine of theta is equal to the opposite side of the hypotenuse, and cosecant was equal to the hypotenuse divided by the opposite side. We could also rewrite cosecant as equaling 1 over sine of theta. Again, cosecant and sine are reciprocal functions. 
So if I know the cosecant of 45 degrees is square root of 2, let's see if I can get our calculator to give us the same answer. Again, I don't have a cosecant button, but I do have a sine button. So what I could do is go ahead and type sine of 45 degrees, being very careful to put the closing parentheses. In fact, you know what? I'm going to go click on mode. Good, I'm still in degree mode. And now I'm going to press the reciprocal button. This does the same thing as saying 1 over sine of 45 degrees. And again, I know cosecant of 45 degrees is square root of 2. Let's go ahead and type in square root of 2. And yes, it does equal that. You can also just type in 1 divided by sine of 45 degrees and that would work as well. One word of warning. If I do type in sine of 45 and I don't put my closing parentheses and I then use my reciprocal button, I get something that's not exactly correct. The problem is that reciprocal is then only affecting the 45. We need that reciprocal button to affect the entire phrase sine of 45 degrees. So make sure you use the closing parentheses. So I showed how to find the cosecant of an angle. Cosecant is equal to 1 over the sine of an angle. The secant and cotangent are found the same way. The secant of 45 degrees is equal to the reciprocal of cosine of 45 degrees or cosine of 45 degrees and parentheses and we'll use the reciprocal button and enter and as expected it equals 1.4142. The cotangent we'll find by taking the tangent of 45 degrees and again using a reciprocal button well 1 over 1 the reciprocal of 1 is still 1 and that's how you can use the calculator to find the reciprocal functions cosecant, secant, and cotangent. We've talked about reciprocal functions. Now we need to talk about inverse trig functions. If you look above the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons on your calculator, in yellow you'll see sine to the minus 1, cosine to the minus 1, and tan to the minus 1. These look like they could be exponents to the negative 1 which looks a lot like the reciprocal button that does say x to the minus 1. But these are not exponents. This is an inverse function. These are finding the inverse functions of the sine, of the cosine, and the tangent. That is, it takes the output that the sine, cosine, and tangent functions would give you and tells you what input would have caused that output. So we've basically reversed the inputs and the outputs. So what we'll do is we'll put a trig ratio into the inverse function and then it will give us the angle that caused that value. Let's look at an example. Before, if I wanted to find the sine of 45 degrees, again let's make sure our mode is still correct. Yep, there it is in degree mode. All I would do is hit sine 45 and enter and it would give me 0.7071. Now say I want to know the opposite. Say I want to know what angle would give me a sine of 0.7071. That's where I'll use the sine inverse button. I'll use it like this, sine inverse of that 0.7071, enter well, it doesn't quite give me 45 degrees. Remember, we said 0.7071 was an approximation of square root of 2 over 2. But you can tell by the answer that 44.999 is pretty close to 45 degrees. Let's look at this for tangent. If I did second and then tan inverse, and if instead of 45 degrees I give my output of 1, hopefully I will get an angle of 45 degrees. And there we have, using the TI-83 Plus in degree measure mode, going over basic trig functions, the reciprocal trig functions, and the inverse trig functions.